welcome to Ease the Load, the show which is full of ideas to help make your job easier and more fulfilling. Today, we're taking a look at schemes which enhance pupils' learning experiences, which in turn benefits teachers. One school takes its pupils down on the farm for a week. Another one uses performing arts to enhance learning in the classroom. In Norwich, this school gives its pupils brains a workout. Chapel Street Primary in Manchester took 30 of its pupils to a working farm in Gloucestershire for a few days. The children get involved in all aspects of farm life while the teachers get to engage with the pupils on a completely different level. For the teachers, it's a scheme that can be best described as a change is as good as a rest. We all know that going on a residential trip can be hard work and really tiring, but we're here today at Whitcourt Farm, which is a farm for city children, and we're going to see how it benefits both teachers and children to have a week away from the classroom. So can you tell me what this week's Muck and Magic is all about? It's about the staff having an opportunity to bring the children away to a fantastic environment and having a great time. It's just to give children a chance to live in a city environment to come and live somewhere completely different. We feel that if children actually do things, then they not only remember it, but begin to understand it they're involved in doing, um, they're being told things but they're also actually physically experiencing so they're practicing and they, it, it's going in up here. And here that means plenty of mucking out. So do you think it improves team building and, and building up a bond between the children and the teacher? Yeah, I think that's one of the main things we do because everything we do here is geared towards working in small groups, working together, working together safely. It's all about sitting down together, eating at the same table, and talking together. And a lot of teachers choose to come in the September term at the beginning of the year. So they get to know the children, the children get to know each other, maybe the classes are mixed up again, and the children and teachers start working together really well. Would you rather be here or back in the classroom? Um, I'd rather be here, that's one of the reasons that I did it, just because it's it's something different, it's it's a week out of the classroom. Yeah. So and it's what I keep saying to the kids as well. When they're moaning about wheelbarrowing and stuff like that, I'm saying to them, Well, would you prefer to be doing numeracy now and yeah. uh, barrowing wins every time? So. <laughs> <laughs> I work with two different classes and what I've been doing since September is trying to build up a relationship with them. Um, and it's just been a lot easier to do it here because there's more opportunity to, to play games with them, there's more opportunity to do stuff that's, that's just different really. Is it a long day? Is it quite tiring? Or? Yeah, it is a long day. Um, we're up about half past six in order to get the kids up for seven um, and we're getting the kids in bed about half nine, ten o'clock. Um, so yeah, it's a really full on yeah. long day. The children also get involved in other activities, such as artwork. Take your hands off the tap, sweetheart. You do your wellies off the telly, then you need to go and wash your hands inside. Health and safety is our main focus. It's We start the week by explaining safe practices to the children and we monitor them and keep you know, on top of it throughout the week. Just feeding the cows. And, and we've been yeah. doing gardening as well. And feeding some pigs. And and pigs. pigs are the greedy. After a hard day's work, it's time for bed. See how quick we can get in and get to sleep tonight. You were really, really good last night, thank you. OK. Well, I'll go round and check the other dormitories and we'll give you ten minutes as normal and then it's coming lights out. Standing up in front of a class is a bit like acting. We teachers have to put on a performance. But Chesham Park Community School in Chesham 
has turned the tables and gets the pupils to do the performing. In 2004, it became a specialist performing arts college to pursue creative ways of unlocking learning across the curriculum. Across a whole scheme of work, the aim is to ensure that performing arts has its place. Um, and uh, that's our policy, that's our strategy. Um, and the staff have, have embraced that with tremendous enthusiasm. In history, they're using role play to look at medieval uh, religion and uh, monastic life. In technology, they're using puppetry and role play to try and uh, engage children in the skills of textiles. In maths, they're using uh, rhythm and music uh, to develop uh, conceptual understanding in mathematics. And for history, that meant just adapting slightly some of the lessons we already do, because we've always done a lot of performing arts work, we've done a lot of drama, a lot of music, just because it lends itself to history, really. And we just made it more detailed and more explicit in our schemes of work, but we found that the students enjoy it anyway, particularly for difficult subjects like the dissolution of the monasteries. And students are more motivated, um, it's more enjoyable because they have the main focus, they have complete control of their own work, it's all ownership, and the learning outcomes are just as good, if not better, than they had been if they were just simply reading from a textbook. So for me it's more enjoyable. Like anything, once a lesson is set up, it can be used again and again, they enjoy it, we adapt it. There's no great need for resources, they bring things in from home, the drama department, you only need things like a brown sheet, it's the whole more relaxed attitude that they can do, it's not all book work. It's easier and you learn more because you're more concentrated because if you keep reading off a book then you get a tiny bit bored. When you're role playing and you like listen and stuff so you learn more when you role play. The staff at Chesham Park here are very enthusiastic about using the performing arts and developing a more creative curriculum does help with the teaching and learning. It helps boost staff morale, um, it helps the students learn more effectively and it's the sort of thing that I could recommend any school to go for. It isn't easy for all members of staff and in fact it's, it's proved quite difficult for some departments to incorporate performing arts but we are expecting every year, year group in every subject area to have had some performing arts input. When we do Pythagoras' theorem again, I shall expect some Greek togas and this sort of business. As someone that's been teaching for over 40 years, new things come along and I think it's exciting to engage them. When it was suggested initially that we were going to involve all subjects in performing arts, uh, I think there were several staff who were a bit reticent about how they were going to cope, how they were going to be involved and so on. And in the maths department there were several people who felt that it was going to be difficult to do this. So we decided that what we would do is do it gradually. It's given me a new lease of life as a teacher um, because I'm looking at things with fresh eyes. Uh, I'm able to engage with other members of staff in the performing arts areas because I can get advice from them about how to do this and what would be a valuable way of talking through a particular subject or topic that we're dealing with. I feel the staff are getting far more confident now in using music, dance and drama in their lessons. Um, and the children, the, the teaching and the learning has improved. Textual Community First School gets its pupils moving too. They have a lunchtime club called the Brain Gym, where pupils get to practice the technique which helps the brain and the body work together more effectively. Great for improving concentration and memory. We started doing Brain Gym about seven years ago in school. We weren't sure how it would go. It was a fairly new idea. And so we thought, we'll just go with it, see what happens. started working with individual children targeted for specific reasons, the, those who were having difficulties with, with their learning. And it worked very well, so we decided later on to, to target whole year groups in one go. Every child in year two does it on a regular basis at lunch times. So all of the children through the school will benefit from it. Is that exercise will help your hand-eye coordination? 
The exercise I like best of all is cross crawl, which is a coordination exercise. It works both sides of the brain at the same time, as does something like swimming and crawling on the floor. But cross crawl is one that they can all do very easily. You need a small amount of space. It stimulates the brain, it improves coordination, thinking, reasoning. One of the powerful things about brain exercises is that they do help children to actually use both sides of the brain at once. For example, if you're using, say, your left side of the brain, then it's your right side of the body that's working and, and vice versa. In my role as head teacher, it has certainly eased things for me because it's given all of the staff and myself another tool in the way to help children to concentrate on their learning. So for me, it's, it's lovely to know that I can go into classrooms, there's calm learning happening. I work with two children in particular from the reception class and I do exercise with them sort of on a one-to-one -one or one-to-two basis. I do these because their attention and their concentration within class is sometimes poor and I do find this helps to relax them and brings them out of the learning environment but still keeps them learning and active and energised and focused. The girl with cerebral palsy, I tend to do the finger exercises and it actually gets her physical disabilities forgotten about for some time. With the child with behavioural problems, I find the more motor skill activities are better for him, as although they don't require the same concentration as the fine motor skill activities, they require him to think about his spatial awareness, which for him is a big problem. A bit faster. When I first heard about Brain Gym, I was extremely sceptical, really, and not a little nervous because I am very badly coordinated, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, is this something that I'm going to be able to do? But actually, the exercises are extremely simple and straightforward. We would do it with them in order to calm children, in order to energise them, and also to give a sort of structure to what they're doing. In terms of my own well-being, um, I think it eases my stress level, it means I don't have to raise my voice and get cross. It's something that I can just drop into at any time, and I think they can be a very effective tool in terms of classroom management. As a leader of this learning community, it gives me joy actually to see a school where children are focused and calm and where teachers are really, really enjoying the job of teaching. And it's a very different place to the place it was, say, ten years ago, where calm is not a word I would have used. That's it for today. Do check out the Teachers TV website at www.teachers.tv for more information. Bye for now. If you've got any load-easing ideas to share, then please contact us here at www.teachers.tv forward slash ease the load.